Good morning. This video is going to show what a, what a nurse should take with her or him, make no assumptions, to a home care case. I'm an RN. I've been doing home care cases for the last few years and with a lot of trial and error I've learned what to bring and what not to bring and what you don't want to be stranded without. I work in the middle of the night, the overnight shift, and there are certain things I find very useful to my survival. And I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a tour of my nurse's bag. Okay, the first thing you need is the bag. This is a video about what to carry in your bag. I don't carry a purse at, to, to my pediatric home care cases. I carry a bag and put everything in that because I try to have one object to carry out the door with me at the end of the shift. I also keep, this is a dedicated bag. This is only for my home care case that I'm currently working. I don't carry, I have a different bag for, for, my, other, for my other jobs, whether it's the nursing home or being a school nurse, but for the home care case, one bag. The next thing you need is your ID badge from your uh, agency and mine's turned over for privacy reasons but just to get you in the door the next thing you need is either a time card now I again I have this folded over for privacy reasons you need a time card or if you um, if your agency has a phone-in system your calling instructions and I have my calling instructions folded over I keep a dedicated three ring binder for each case I do. And I'm gonna open this up. No patient identification is identifiable. So we're not violating HIPAA. But I have the patient's information in the front. And then if, as, you go, as you go back into the pages, I have printouts on their drugs, their diseases, and their equipment so if anything happens I can troubleshoot I don't have to be toddling down the hall at 3 in the morning you know with the questions of course you can always do that you always it's better to be safe than sorry but if you can figure it out yourself that that's really nice for the family the other thing I do is just so I make sure I do everything because at night there's a flurry of activity in the beginning as you put the patient to bed there's a flurry of activity at the end of the shift if the child is old enough to be going to school you're going to be doing the get up the the final meds before they go to school this and that so I will I will write a timeline again this isn't HIPAA um, it's I'll write a timeline of the night everything I'm going to do every hour of of the shift because of course some things like you check your ventilator settings every hour you check your IVs every hour you check you know you, you you you're monitoring all the time but but you check every hour you know you know what I'm saying now I find that also it helps keep me awake if I have something going on every hour because the the hours can stretch and sometimes it feels like it's gonna be an endless shift and you're gonna be in that room forever all right um, also for something to do for something to read as a reference book I mean I know that a lot of us carry smartphones and things not necessarily I like to carry my pediatric nursing made incredibly easy it's I love the series of books they're they're written from the point of view that yeah you've already been through school you've already learned this stuff but maybe you've been away from pediatrics for a while maybe you've been away from med surge maybe you know whatever and this helps to review the things that you already know and even learn a few new things so I love my my incredibly easy book and it's a very good reference all right so you're sitting there you need to eat so you you bring you bring your snack some families are like oh use our microwave well first of all I don't want to I don't want to stick up the whole house in the middle of the night I don't want to make noises as much as I can in the middle of the night and I also have a theory that I don't really like to use the family stuff as much as possible. I like to be self-contained and self-sufficient. I feel like it's a very easy trap to be drawn into. And I'm not saying that, that families, you know, are looking to trap you. But when you're dealing, you know, you have a family who's under stress, a sick kid, caregivers running in and out of the house. 
it's very easy for like if a misunderstanding should arise then it becomes personal we let her use the microwave we let her use this and that and now this happened no i i'm self-sufficient as much as i possibly can i'll use i'll use the bathroom and i will charge my my stuff but that's it okay the other thing is you've got to have coffee when i've worked in the nursing home i have gotten by with no coffee at all in the middle of the night but there's lights there there's call bells there's co-workers there's things to do constantly most home care cases are dim you're with one person who's usually asleep not always there is nobody to talk to because the family's in bed and nature can very easily take over and find and you find yourself nodding off and that's simply not okay um so you need your coffee all right you need other hydration yes i know caffeine is not hydration i don't care i like my iced tea the other thing i bring is is um heat wraps and here's why your body temperature naturally drops around two or three in the morning you start to get cold a lot of people turn down their heat at night when they go to bed i it's not their job to keep me warm okay but if it's really cold i find that putting one of these on my lower back really helps to warm up my core and it gets me through the night um i don't use them all that much actually but some nights it's just so cold and it's so nice to have them all right so those are the things you need to get through your shift now i'm going to move on to kind of like our own comfort measures I carry a tooth, my, my toothbrush and toothpaste with me because I have Invisalign retainers, so that way I can brush. My chargers, there's nothing worse than looking at your phone and you're at, you know, 20% charge and it's only 2 in the morning and you're going to be there for hours, it's bad. So that's, that is one of the facilities that I will use that the family has, um, and unapologetically three ring binder i started carrying this and i don't even carry it all the time but one time i showed up to work and my agency had sent some papers without the three hole punch in them again first world problems right but you know i kind of like things neat and tidy at my at my job so i brought in a three hole punch and punched a whole bunch of papers if you're at that age like i am where you don't actually need glasses all the time but you need it for small things you gotta bring your glasses. If you're drawing up dosages and things, you need to be able to see. So bring your glasses. I bring my iPad. I use it in the middle of the night. And it's funny because some families, you get the range of families. I've had families who were like, oh, bring your laptop. We know it's slow in the middle of the night. Bring your laptop. We'll give you our Wi-Fi codes. We'll do this and that. I will bring my iPad. I will not use anybody's Wi-Fi password. I just won't. Again, I feel like that gets me into a dependent position where now I owe them something. Um, but in any case, but then you have other families who kind of look at you askance and don't believe there actually is downtime, although there is. So, you know, you have to get a sense for your family and always remembering that families are in crisis. If you're there, it's not because everything went according to plan, all right? Again, I don't carry a purse, so I carry my cell phone and my wallet, because you never know. One thing, I have my stethoscope there. One thing I haven't mentioned is stethoscope, and here's why. Usually the pediatric home cases tend to be immune compromised, and a lot of times the family doesn't really want you to bring in stuff from outside. They'll usually have, in almost every case, will already have a stethoscope hanging there, I'll use their stethoscope. That's the thing you find out on the meet and greet. And they'll tell you whether to bring the stethoscope and they will probably say, no, we have our own. So that that's it for what to put in a nurse's bag. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I, and I hope that my experience has been helpful to you.